In this video, we're taking a look at the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run. What's up and welcome back to the channel. How are we all doing? If you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe. Now, have you already bagged a pair of these? If you have, let me know in the comments with an emoji what you think about it. Be clean, but what do you think about it so far on the couple of runs that you've done since you've got your hands in it? I'd be very, very interested to know. And we'll come on to that in a little bit more because I want some feedback from you guys. So this is probably one of the hottest uh, shoes of early 2021 that's finally come out. The Nike Invincible uh, Run, flying it Invincible Run, keep calling it the wrong thing. Um, it's a very interesting shoe, there's lots to talk about, so let's get stuck in. Okay guys, right, so this is my first impressions. I've only done three runs in the shoe, but I wanted to do a first impressions video um, just to let you know how I've been getting on with it initially. Um, I want to do the stats and features, get them out of the way first, then we can talk about how it feels and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, price, £160, which we will talk about in detail, but it's £160. The shoe weighs over 11 ounces in my UK 9.5, and that's what, over 315 grams? It's a guess, by the way. Um, so we've got the Zoom X uh, midsole. We'll talk about that as well. We've got the um, Flying It Upper, uh, which is uh, interesting. Uh, we've got the Waffle uh, Design Outsole, uh, which is pretty good, actually. And then we've got elements of structure around uh, the shoe, and particularly on the heel with this sort of clip, this plastic rubberized clip. Um, what else, what else, what else? And overall, the sort of footprint of it is all about adding some st stability. You're gonna have to excuse me. I cut my lip today, look. I put me tooth from my lips, so bear with me on this video. Anyway, um, yeah, they've added some stability in terms of width of the shoe um, because of the Zoom X being very, very soft. Um, and I'll give you an idea, where were those? So I was doing a uh, video, comparison video of the uh, New Balance earlier to another shoe, but look, just as an idea, look at the uh, heel and then look at the top. See that? I think it's more interesting. Look at the flare on this shoe across here versus the New Balance. Interesting. I mean, I'm going to say it straight away. <laughs> the New Balance is a very good shoe. It's still relatively similarly priced to this. Okay, so uh, version 10, which I didn't particularly love that much, uh, but a lot of people did, it might be a good alternative, a cheap alternative to this if you don't want to pay £160. I'll just put that out there straight away while we've got that up here so yeah version 10 which you can get for under 100 pounds at the moment um, as a recovery shoe and that's what this shoe really is i think it's an easy pace uh, recovery uh, run shoe uh, long run shoe but doing them at easy miles um, that's where it comes in um, it's a very very interesting concept you've got to take your hat off to nike for creating another shoe that we probably didn't need but they've come out with this which is awesome um, <laughs> They're brilliant, but not only are creating these different shoes, which you, you say you have to take your hat off, but also, but also the marketing uh, to make us all buy and spend £160 on a shoe, like I say, that we, we probably never thought of. But you know what? It's a brilliant concept, but have they actually nailed it? Okay, right. So uh, if you've been uh, running in carbon plated Zoom X shoes, um, you probably want some form of recovery shoe. Um, and that I think is the idea behind the Invincible. It's a easy paced shoe that complements the carbon racers that have got the Zoom X. That I think is the sort of way Nike were thinking. And I totally understand it, um, that you want to transition, you know, from this to that and all that sort of stuff. Um, you're using the same sort of foam between the two. Um, yeah, and I get it, right? So that makes a lot of sense to me, uh, why they bought the shoe out. The couple of bits that I uh, just want to talk about uh, before we get into how it feels and all that sort of stuff. 
I'm not a huge fan of the upper. I'll put that straight out there. Um, it's a funny old material, a bit different to what I was expecting. Uh, and it's a bit of a, what's the best way to describe it? Mishmash, I suppose. Um, you've got different, it feels like different materials around it. Um, sort of hard here, as you'd expect, because they're trying to add stability in the heel. There's the heel clip, by the way, which is shorter or smaller than what's on the Infinity Run. But it's like a, a rubberized neoprene, hardened neoprene material, if you know it exists, to, uh, with the heel clip to add the stability uh, or elements of stability in the heel. Um, but yeah, the uppers, are, it's a funny old material. Um, you've got the structured eyelets, which is pleasant. Um, they could have shaved some weight around the ankle. They've tried to add padding on the inside, but they've also had it on the outside. I'm not sure why they've done that. Um, they definitely could have shaved a bit of weight um, because this shoe is not light. I mean, it doesn't matter that this shoe is is overly heavy. I mean, it's not overly heavy, but it's not particularly light because it is for those easy days, those re you know recovery runs, those longer, easier miles. You know, this is comparable in weight to like a glide ride, for example. Um, the tongue has got you know padding on there. It's a nice, comfortable place to be around the whole shoe. In terms of fitting. Um, it's actually quite wide in the toe box. I like it. Uh, the high arch for me um, was, uh, was, I could just feel it. Um, actually, high arch, I don't know if it's the right word. But see where it's sculpted in? I could just feel that um, a little bit. Um, and it's the same on the Infinity Run, so just be careful if you do struggle with your arch. See where that's sculpted in? I did feel it. Um, it wasn't giving me a huge amount of discomfort, but I could feel it. So I bear that in mind because look, you can see where that sculpts in. But in terms of the toe box, it's fine. I'm a UK nine and a half. This is a UK nine and a half. Had no problems with heel slippage. One problem I have had, you may notice, I've got a uh, runner's knot on this shoe. Look how small. <laughs> um, yeah, not sure why that is. I think Nike need to have a chat with Reebok because Reebok have got like the world's longest laces. They're like eight times the size of this. Nike have gone the other way. So <laughs> I was kind of struggling to get a double knot on them because I like to put a double knot on my shoes. But anyway, um, I don't know what that's about, but whatever. Uh, the, the swish down the side doesn't really add any structure, but it looks good. Um, mm, 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 oh, outsole. So as you can see, down the toe paths, I've been in these um, and the traction is very good. The, um, the aim of this sole is to protect the Zoom X, obviously to help in terms of um, uh, traction, but I think it's really to protect the Zoom X. That's why they haven't got any exposed bits on it, like, you know, you've got on something like this, for example. Um, they've added just one big slab of this um, waffled uh, outsole rubber, which, you know what, does a really good job. Really, really good job. Please of it down the toe paths. Uh, ran it in the rain, that was good, done a good job. So yeah, overall, pleased with the outsole. I like what they've done. Yes, you could argue that they could have saved some weight by not putting full length rubber, but I think actually it makes a lot of sense and hopefully it helps in terms of durability. We'll find out when we come back and do the performance review. In talking about durability, interesting, because uh, maybe we'll start talking about the ZoomX now, but look, I've already taken a lump, and I'll put a picture up, probably easier, out of the Zoom X. Um, now the Zoom X on this shoe has got like um, it's got like a coating around it. It's got like a I don't know. It's got like a sheen to it. If you look at uh, an Alpha Flight, uh, that won't come out because of the focus. It's like raw, but this they've added like a sheen. I think to try and protect it because they know how sensitive. It's a sensitive little fella, the Zoom X. Um, and uh, one thing I would say, and I'll, I was going to come on to that, how it feels, but it doesn't feel as Zoomexy, if that's even a word, maybe I've just invented a word. Let me know in the comments, have I just invented a word? But it doesn't feel as Zoomexy as some of the other Zoomexy shoes. Um, it doesn't feel like a Pegasus Turbo 2. I don't know, it just maybe, I might be imagining things. Put it out there, say it's only a first impressions video. We'll come, you know, come back to it because, you know, probably give and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, for example, um, React Foam always feels better further down the line and that's a harder compound feeling. Um, but yeah, it just feels like, um, it feels more, probably gonna say this wrong, probably get hammered by you guys who love Nike, but it just feels a little bit more rubberized than sort of foamy. Um, yeah, that's probably the, the only way I can sort of explain it. You know what I mean if you run in these shoes. And again, these have got carbon plates in, so again, it's, a, it's not a fair comparison. Um, and by the way, if you are looking for a fast shoe and you're thinking this is it, it's not. 
you want one of these because um, it doesn't have a carbon plate in it. Um, but yeah, the Zoom X is not very Zoom Xy. Um, it's soft. Um, in that respect, it's the same. I'll make you laugh. I watched a bloke today. <laughs> he was running in the park and he was running in a pair of these and he, and he was literally like that. that. I don't know why, who told him to buy these shoes because he was collapsing so much on the inside. I thought, I pronate. But he can't be doing his ankles any good. That's how soft the Zoom X. So you've really got to make sure that it, it suits you because it is a very, very soft compound. He was literally like that. And I thought, you're going to injure yourself, mate. I was just like wincing as he was running along. Um, and that's the thing. Sorry, I've, I've gone totally off piste. But the Zoom X in it, it is very, very soft. Whatever way you go from it, it is a very, very soft ride. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Actually, I think it's a good thing. And the the package that they've created, I think they've nailed it. Um, there are little elements um, that are slight irritations, upper, laces, blah, blah, blah. Um, but actually, if you're looking for a um, everyday shoe and you don't mind paying 160 pounds, we'll come on to that right at the end of the video, then, and you're a Nike fan, you're gonna love it. It's as simple as that. And I, to be honest with you, I think it actually, it doesn't matter what I say or what anybody else on YouTube says or what anybody else write, writes us about this shoe, people are gonna buy this shoe in the bucket loads because Nike, like I said at the start, have done such a good job in terms of marketing and, and where they uh, place the product. And so, you know, but in terms of my thoughts about it, I think, yes, it is a very good uh, shoe um, for what, it does, I say those easy runs, those those longer runs is probably where it'll come into his own and those easier paces we'll find out as we put more miles on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it will do all that for you. It's interesting in terms of pace, you would think that being a little bit heavier, uh, being more set up for comfort and all that sort of thing, that it might be a little bit sluggish, but I actually felt it more in a sweet spot for me, more when I was going towards that goal pace. Uh, when I was running at easy pace, I was like, you know, on the hill, feeling the cush, blah, blah, blah. And it was just really nice, really smooth, really comfortable. Um, reasonably stable. Uh, it's definitely more stable than an overblast. Um, but it was when I sort of done a, I can't remember which day it was, but I went at goal pace. Um, and then I did like a, a progressive run as well. And the more I got into it, the sort of, yeah, I just found a nicer spot for it. Um, and it responded well. So I was quite pleased in terms of the tempo side of it. This is not a tempo shoe, but if you want to do some quicker runs, you may be able to sneak them in. I would still recommend you go and, you know, get a tempo shoe or something like that, you know, not necessarily that, but maybe something from Sketches or the Kinvara or whatever. But yeah, it's, um, it was surprising at those paces. I thought that it would be a bit sluggish and it'd be a bit healthier um, than I thought. So again, kudos for it. But here's the thing. So, I hammered the Adidas Ultra Boost 21 for being 160 pounds. And I still stand by that video. And I actually still think, whatever way you look at it, 160 pounds is a lot of money for an everyday shoe. A Nike Pegasus, which is, this is better, is cheaper. A Nova Blast, which is a soft ride, is under 100 pounds at the moment. It's, it's, if, if you um, don't have any problems with stability, you'll love it. Um, but I struggle with that shoe because of the stability issues. But it's as soft as this, argument, uh, argumentatively, but it is, I think, as soft as this. And it's under 100 pounds. And actually, I think, and I might be wrong, let me know in the comments, I think it's actually a bit lighter. But you can get that for under 100 pounds and it will do pretty much everything this will do. And it might go a little bit faster. Um, recovery run shoes, I think, like I said uh, earlier, you can get the 1080 version 10 for under 100 pounds. You can get a glide ride for under 100 pounds. Um, there's plenty of shoes out there that are under 100 pounds that will do easy pace runs, recovery runs. So at 160 pounds, I don't think it offers really, really good value. And if you could only buy one shoe and you had 160 pounds to buy, uh, to spend, then I would actually send you to buy the Saucony Speed, which you might think I'm mad. That's a TPU plated shoe that, you know, you can wear, you know, for race day and stuff like that. But I think the Saucony will do everything for you. You'll be able to do those sort of easier runs in it. Uh, it is a softish ride and you'll be then able to take that through to race day. So do you see what I mean? In terms of uh, value, 
uh, that, I think actually that shoe is 155 pounds, but it just offers a little bit more value. So if you only had, uh, you could only buy one shoe, sorry, um, then I would probably say buy the Saucony Speed instead of this. But if you're a big fan of Nike, you're gonna love it. If you are lucky enough to be able to afford a couple of shoes in your rotation, there's nothing wrong with this shoe. I think you will dig it, especially if you're a Nike fan. Um, the only thing for me, I, <laughs> I kind of still prefer my Asics Nimbus Lite 2. Um, maybe because I've been obviously spending a lot of time in them and it's maybe a bit unfair because as I say, this is only a first impressions of the shoe. Um, the traction is definitely better on this shoe, but I don't know, I just like the, the, the Nimbus Lite 2. The, the stack height, I mean, this stack height has got, what's it's got nine mil drop. Uh, this has got a stack height, I think about 29 and a half uh, in the heel. I might be wrong, and I'll tell you what, let me just check my phone. Um, where is it? Uh, sorry, 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 I should have checked this before. No, th what's wrong about? 36.6 in the heel, what's wrong about 29? Um, it's 36.6 in the heel, so it's got a lot more stack than the Nimbus Lite 2. I don't know, I just, I still prefer, I think, the Nimbus Lite 2, but I'll come back on that and I'll do a versus video. So finally, I spent way too long on this video and uh, you've probably already switched it off. But to conclude, this is a good shoe. I think you'll like it. You'll like it, particularly if you're a bit of a heel striker. Uh, be careful of the Zoom X. It does feel a little bit sensitive. I say I've already taken a lump out of it. The traction's good. Uh, there's plenty of width in there. The upper's a bit dodgy. The laces are too short. They could have shaved weight on there. But you know what? You're probably still going to buy it anyway. <laughs>